welcome to Packed with Flavor, where we open up a booster pack and take a look at all the flavor goodness that's inside. Today we're going to be opening up a pack of Throne of Eldraine. Eldraine, often dubbed the fairy tale set, plays with two major themes. The folklore of the British Isles, most predominantly the Arthurian legends and myths, and the folklore of Central Europe, leaning heavily on the grim fairy tales of Germany. These two aesthetics are expressed on Eldraine through the five mono-coloured courts of the realm and the unpredictable, enchanting, and often cruel wilds. This is also the first mainline set in which we see the modern inclusion of showcase borders and accessible semi-regular alternate arts. The artistic director was Cynthia Shepard. Let's get cracking. First out of the pack, we have Mystic Sanctuary, art by Randy Vargas. Having illustrated for magic since Hour of Devastation, this is Vargas' first and at time of recording only land card. The soft, hazy lines and the lavender sky add a serene mysticism to the piece, and the discreet blue lights near the shore hint to the magic that sits just below the surface on Eldraine. Simple, yet mysterious. Garen Brig Carver, art by Lucas Graciano. This is the first example we have of the new adventure mechanic and the accompanying frame. Not only does the book that forms the text box tie in with the storybook fairy tale theme of the set, but functionally they also work like turning the pages as you move from one mode to another. In the case of the Carver, the flavour text makes up the second page, furthering the story of this craftsman and the green aligned court of Garen Brig. Eye Collector, art by Uriah Voth. Unlike the blue, cavalier fairies of the courts that steal and fence, or the roaming, white-aligned fairies whose motives are often shrouded, the black-aligned fairies of the wilds prefer to conduct cruel and malicious pranks that often result in grievous bodily harm to their victims. The flavour text also makes reference to Rankle, the leader of these imps, himself modelled after the fairy tale of Rumpelstiltskin. Jousting Dummy, art by Millevoy Seram. I really like the creature typing of Scarecrow Knight, as we find out in the flavour text that this sparring doll is called Sir Nobody. A subtle nod to the idea that even in the courts of the realm, magic can be unpredictable and must be respected by adventurers. I also get similar vibes between this card and Sparring Mummy from Amonkhet, mirroring the themes of training against a faceless, magic-imbued opponent. Next up we have Sporecap Spider. This card's flavour ties in wonderfully to its actual function in a limited game. In this set, the majority of fairy cards, the staple flies of Eldraine, are 3 CMC or less, making them early evasive threats that plague players, much like the witches in the flavour text. And, much as these witches discovered, the solution to such vexations is a high toughness spider with reach. Next up we have another art by Lucas Graciano in Vantress Paladin. It makes perfect sense that the Knights of Castle Vantress, a court that prides itself on knowledge and wisdom, should ride owl-headed griffins. Owls are often associated with these virtues, being linked not only to the Greek goddess of wisdom, Athena, but perhaps more relevantly to the more modern depictions of Merlin, the court wizard of Camelot and advisor to King Arthur. Also, Graciano manages to sneak in an Eldraine dragon into the background of this art, with a far more classic and direct aesthetic than we usually get to see in Magic. Next up we get another art by Randy Vargas in Malevolent Noble. The visual depiction of the nobleman in this art is a clear reference to the French fairy tale of Bluebeard, in which a nobleman marries and then murders a series of maidens and locks their corpses up in a cupboard. The flavour text also gives this tale a Hansel and Gretel-esque spin, swapping out the maidens for witches, lured by the promise of children's bones. The considered use of the word malevolent in the card's name tells us this may not be a charitable act on behalf of Bluebeard here. Next up we have Raging Red Cap, art by Dan Scott. The goblins of Eldraine are often depicted as being particularly vicious and covered in blood, which stains their clothes, earning them the nickname Red Cats. This horrid backstory doesn't stop Scott injecting some grim humour into the piece, however, donning the double striking goblin in a helmet two sizes too big for its head and a sword in each hand. The flavour text takes this further, suggesting the true owner of these weapons, much like the blood on the goblin's arms, 
was at one point likely somebody else. Outflank, art by Victor Adame Minguez. The flavour text reads, With the drum of hooves and a flash of blades, the monster's terrifying roar changed to a cry of fear. Legend of the Gilded Knights. One of the many themes explored in the set and the ebook, The World of Quest by Kate Elliott, is the arrogant notion formed by the realm dwelling humans that the courts are superior and more cultured than the denizens of the encroaching wilds, who must be tamed. This is ingrained so much into the realm's mentality that they themselves have legends and myths to support that fact, despite many conflicts being started by their own adventuring into territories beyond their borders. Fell the Pheasant, art by Randy Galagos. Food is a new mechanic introduced in Eldraine, and as such, game designers and world building teams have been able to craft something truly special. As seen here, the player casting this spell is able to directly live the experiences of the Garenbrig hunting party, killing their prey and consuming its flesh for sustenance. Even in more fantastical contexts, as seen on cards such as Ginger Brute or Bake into a Pie, the experience is far more immediate and relatable in a way that is often hard to achieve in a game where conjuring giant fireballs or controlling time is commonplace. Kenrith's Transformation, art by Kimonas Theodosio. One of the more prominent story spotlight cards in the set, depicting the temporary fate of King Alginus Kenrith, turned into a stag by the Machiavellian planeswalker Oko. But if, just for a second, we forget the card name and the spotlight text in the frame, we can see that the signs are all still there. Stag antlers are often paralleled with royal crowns, and the soft light of the forest highlights the important true nature of this particular animal. But the biggest sign that this is Eldraine's absent king is the stag's fur coat. Look closely, and you can see the same pattern that makes up Ardenvale's court insignia as seen here on Kenrith's very own legendary creature card. Next up we have Overwhelmed Apprentice, art by Jason Rainville. Both the name and art, which depicts an untrained magician facing off against magically moving objects, are clearly inspired by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's 1797 poem, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Like many of the fairy tales in this set, this poem was also adapted by Disney, this one specifically in 1940s short film Fantasia. Improbable Alliance, art by Zoltan Boros. For my money, this is one of the most fun art pieces in the set. Boros goes full on in saturating the dwarf's red beard and his comrade's blue wings in a literal alliance of tribes in colours. I also enjoy the fact that the fairy has their blade drawn and ready for battle, despite its situation of being contained in a lantern. Dance of the Mance, art by Yong Hao Han. The theme of magical dancing furniture that comes alive explored in the card art and ability has been interpreted by many to be a direct nod to the Disney adaptation of Beauty and the Beast. For those wondering what a manse is, a manse is the house and home of a Christian clergyman. Yet another Lucas Graciano art here in Basic Island. The blue banner of Castle Vantress can be predominantly seen in this piece. In fact, each cycle of basic lands has one art that contains a banner from each of the five courts showing their influence over the realm. And lastly, we have an Adventure Zone card, art by Adam Paquette. Paquette's beautifully detailed art shows a knight following ethereal lights down a winding forest path. This is a very distilled and focused depiction of many of the set's themes and captures perfectly the idea of heading into the unknown on some grand quest perhaps entranced by a magical calling. The frame is also a blending of the regular art border used for the adventure cards and the rarer showcase borders. The blue sections at the top are also a nice depiction of the opposing factions of the realm and the wilds. And that's the pack. Eldrain is absolutely drenched in references, with each card having some deeper connection to real-world legends and folklores. But this didn't stop Cynthia Shepard and the rest of the world-building team from creating something that feels uniquely magic, offering us a high fantasy plane that never felt generic or bland. Let me know in the comments, guys, what your favourite flavour pick was from the pack, and what other cards from the set caught your eye. 
If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you also check out our full-length podcast, Magic the Flavoring, for all things magic flavor, design, and lore. You can also follow us on Twitter at MTFlavoring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.